Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. I ask, O oh God, that you will illuminate our understanding, that you will fill our spirits with light and bring us into deep understanding of the truth of your word. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. So I'm sharing on angels and I'd like to take an open um, an opening. I'd like to take an opening from Matthew chapter 18 and verse 10. Matthew 18 and verse 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. We have angels and in this scripture Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's telling them that every one of these little ones have got angels. We don't outgrow our angels. We don't we don't lose our angels just because we we have become adults. Everyone has angels. Angels were given to us to minister to us, to minister for us. They were given to us so that we can enjoy many different things. When you look at Psalm 34 verse 7, Psalm 34 verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encompassed round about them that fear him to deliver them. Look, we are surrounded by a powerful host of angels. Let me leave some part of this teaching for the next time that we teach on the subject. But this is Jesus and he's telling his disciples that, hey, these little children around, don't despise them. Don't despise them. They have angels and these angels always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. And I'm saying we don't lose our angels just because we grew up. We don't lose our angels because we have become adults. We have angels. I looked at the ministry of Jesus and I saw that he needed angels. Oh yes, Jesus needed angels. He, he, he talked about angels. Let me give you an example. An example would be in Matthew, in Matthew chapter um, 26, Matthew 26 and verse let's see verse uh, 53 of Matthew 26 let's see verse 53 Matthew 26 are you there with me this teaching will help you this 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 has helped me the knowledge of angels has greatly helped me has helped me and this is going to help you okay so Matthew 26 in verse 53 um, First of all, we find that Jesus is arrested right here, right? And so the people come, the soldiers come, and all the emissaries from the high priest and all of those uh, mercenaries from the, from, the, from the high priest, they come to arrest him. And so Peter puts up a big fight. He pulls out his sword and he slashes the ear of the servant of the, of the, of the high priest. Now, in verse 52, Jesus responding to Peter's action. He says to him, uh, put up again thy sword in his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Now, verse 53, Jesus says something very powerful. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently. Presently means immediately. Don't forget the Bible says that God is our very present help in time of trouble. You remember Psalm 46 verse 1? Now, but Jesus says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. I am convinced that one of the very present helps of God made available to the believer is the ministry of the angels the ministry of the angels so jesus says to peter hey put your sword back in place the reason i'm being arrested is because it's a plan if it wasn't a plan and i needed to defend myself this is what i'll do i will immediately pray to my father and he would discharge or he would dispatch as a matter of urgency more than seventy-two thousand angels to service my concerns okay verse 54 but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be it is happening this way because it's a fulfillment of scripture it is happening this way because that is the plan 
If it wasn't the plan, I would immediately pray and the Father will mobilize, will dispatch more than 72,000 angels, more than 12 legions of angels. But if I do it, if I do it, I will obstruct the plan. If I do it, I will interfere with the plan. It's amazing that Jesus told us in this verse that if he had a con if he had a concern and if he needed immediate divine intervention that he would call on God to immediately dispatch angels to his service that's amazing that's amazing we also see Jesus praying in the garden of Gethsemane and he's praying and the Bible says that his tears are like blood drops of blood falling to the ground and an angel came from heaven and strengthened him an angel came from heaven and strengthened him so the entire ministry of jesus was marked by angels you remember when jesus was born and when herod having heard from the uh, wise men right that a savior had been born and being threatened he orders that all the children from two years and above be killed and in a night vision, uh, Joseph has a dream where an angel ap appears to him and tells him to take the child to Egypt. And he's in Egypt cooling off and then an angel shows up again and tells him that everyone that sought the life of the child is dead. That was no coincidence, people. Everyone, not one of the people, not two of the people, not three, not four. Everyone that sought the life of the child is dead. The angel had eliminated everyone that was in the path to destroy Jesus um, and to take his life before his time to take his life before his time it's amazing we have angels how do we use our angels let me show you two more scriptures and i'll try to start winding this down right come with me to the book of hebrews chapter 1 hebrews 1 verse 13 and in verse 14 hebrews 1 13 says to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool verse 14 says are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those that shall be heirs of salvation so that scripture tells us that the angels have been sent forth to minister for those that shall be heirs of salvation Okay, to minister for. And I explained the other day, I was teaching in these lines, that to minister for means that we can send them on errands. You see, to minister to those that are heirs of salvation means they have been sent to us. Maybe God assigns them or sends them to us to accomplish a task. But that scripture didn't just say minister to. He says minister for. Minister for means I can send my angels on errands. What kinds of people do the angels minister for? Heirs of salvation. Heirs of salvation. This subject of angels is so important that Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 says that we need to give the most earnest heed to the things that we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. Meaning this subject, this thing that we have heard about angels, to hold it fast so very much that we don't let it slip off our grasp it's such an important subject that we shouldn't let it slip off our grasp again who are the heirs of salvation because somebody might wonder oh yeah the angels are sent forth to minister for those that are heirs of salvation but who are the heirs of salvation romans chapter 8 Verse 14 says, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 15 says, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16 says, the Spirit beareth witness with our spirits that we are children of God. Verse 17 says, and if children, then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ heirs of god and joint heirs with christ so you see hebrews 1 14 says the angels have been sent forth to minister for those that shall be heirs of salvation we are the ones 
who are joint heirs with Christ. We are the heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And by the way, may I say in passing that everything that Jesus enjoyed in his earthly walk, in his earthly walk, we have access to. That scripture says we are heirs of God and joint heirs. Not inferior heirs, joint heirs. We have equal access to the throne, just like Jesus did. So whatever Jesus enjoyed in his earthly walk, we have access to. Wow, that's powerful. So that scripture is referring to me, that the angels have been sent for to minister for me, and I must learn how to put them to work. I must learn how to mobilize them. How do I mobilize my angels come with me to psalm 103 psalm 103 psalm 103 let's look at verse 20 here psalm 103 psalm 103 and verse 20 verse 20 says bless the lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments. So see what the angels do. They do his commandments. That's their profession. That's what they do. They do his commandments. The angels do his commandments. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. The angels do the commandments of God. Angels are busy in the lives of people who have access to the commandments of God. Access to uh, uh, the commandments of God because the profession of the angels is to do the commandments of God. Wow. So you need access to his commandments. You need to know his commandments. Angels do his commandments. That's their profession. That's what they do. They do his commandments. And how do they get activated to do his commandments? By hearkening unto the voice of of his word. I'm going to come back to that real quick. Verse 21 says, Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. That do his pleasure. Wow. So you see that scripture that says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Mm. You see the scripture that says that God taketh pleasure in the prosperity of his sins. Of his servants, the prosperity of his servants. May I say here that prosperity is beyond money. Prosperity is all round wellness. Prosperity means everything in your life is working, is in a state of productiveness. Okay? Now, so again, verse 20, verse 20, the angels excel in strength. So in every contest, they always have the upper hand. There is no contest where the angels have... Um, have 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 a disadvantage they always have the upper hand they excel in strength then they do his commandments you must know his commandments son of god you must know his commandments you must know what is written you remember how in um in luke chapter 4 and in matthew chapter 4 the devil comes against jesus in the mountain of temptation and the first time Jesus says, it is written. The second time, Jesus says, it is written. The third time, Jesus says, it is written. He knew what was written. He had access, he had knowledge of the commandments of God. You need to load yourself with what is written because the angels will run with what is written. The angels will run with thus saith the Lord. The angels will run with what God has said concerning you. Oh, you can go to Psalm 91 and download that content into your spirit. Hallelujah. And begin to declare, no evil shall come nigh my dwelling. No plague shall befall me. Wow. No evil shall befall me. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high my habitation. There shall no evil before me no plague will come near my dwelling wow he shall give his angels charge over me they will bear me up in their hands lest i dash my foot against a stone you can declare that the arrows that fly by night and the destructions that waste at noonday they shall not come nigh me you can declare that the terror the terror 
that has been formulated from the pit of hell will not come nigh me. And I saw in that scripture that terrorism has been covered under the briefs of the angel concerning my life. Terrorism has been, has been taken care of. You can make declarations that a thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. You need to have access to the commands of God. I saw a scripture in Deuteronomy 28. I believe that would be maybe verse uh, 4 or so. That the Lord shall command the blessing upon my basket and upon my storehouse. Let's see that Deuteronomy 28 and in verse in verse let's see let's see let's see let's see in verse 5 in verse 5 blessed shall be my basket and my store two kinds of blessing the basket and the store the basket carries perishables things that supply my need for a couple days the basket carries immediate needs the store carries things that I do not even need right now. The blessing is not only for my daily bread. The blessing is for my store. And so the blessing guarantees that I am a distribution center. You cannot be a distribution center if all you do is leave hand to mouth. That everything that comes into your hand is what you need for your mouth. It's amazing. So when I need money, what do I do? In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you because your word says you supply all my need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I thank you because your word says you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or imagine. Lord, I thank Thank you for it. And so now in the name of Jesus, Satan, I command you to take your hands off my supplies. I release the angels of God. Go forth, minister to my baskets, minister to my store in Jesus' precious name. Minister to my baskets, minister to my store. After the order of exceeding great abundance, minister to me. The Bible says the Lord is able to cause all grace to abound unto me, that I always having all sufficiency in all things, that I may abound unto every good work. I declare that I abound in all things. Angels, I release you to make it happen in the precious name of Jesus. You see, when you know the commands of God, you know how to release the angels, how to release the angels. Let's go back to that scripture as we attempt to close. Let's go back to uh, Psalm, Psalm 103, Psalm 103, Psalm 103. Now I'll show you one or two more things here that will be very useful to you. Brother, you've got to put your angels to work sister mm, make it happen put your angels to work put your angels to work let's go back to verse 20 there so i said the angels excel in strength the angels do the commandments of god hearkening unto the voice of his word the word of god is written it is the believer that gives it voice the word of God is written. The believer gives it voice. All I did when I was shooting out all of those scriptures was to give voice to the written word. Give voice to the word of God. I shared a testimony one time how I believe this was the year 2002. The year 2002, right? So I had to pay fees. I had been assigned to go pay fees for my younger sister who at the time was in a private university she was studying law at madonna university and uh back then bank transactions weren't you know uh the thing and plus this was a private school they just had their own school bank you couldn't send money to that bank so you had to take cash so and uh, the fee was quite an amount i think i i don't remember it was over a hundred thousand or something however I had this stash of money in my pockets and I got on a bus from Calabar going to Onisha and Okija where that school is is just before Onisha so I was going to stop at a certain place and then go to the school so I arrived at the school and go to the bursary department where I'm supposed to make this payment and realize that one bundle 
of money has dropped from my pocket without my knowing. Okay, so as God will have it, whatever I had was enough to pay the fee. But then I just turned around. I told my sister, I said, I am going to get that money. She was wondering how. You bought a vehicle going to Onisha. You dropped before Onisha. This vehicle has gone on to Onisha. And here you are in Okija. And you say you're going to get the money. But look, I was speaking by faith. Because as I stepped out of that place, I began to say, Father, I pay my tithe. Your word says you will rebuke the devourer for my sake. Now in the name of Jesus, I release the angels of God. Put the fear of God around that money. Secure it for me in Jesus' name. And I went by faith. Listen. If you're going to go get money, you have misplaced money that is headed for Onisha. <laughs> you have to have faith, like real faith, right? So, but I went back to the road and got another vehicle headed for Onisha. And I went right there um, and went to the park. The park for the bus that had carried me from Calabar. I believe it was a cross lines bus or something. And of course they have a park. So I asked around, found the park. I went there. Of course, at the time I got there, there was no one in the car. There was no one in the vehicle. Even the driver wasn't there. Everyone had left. But I went to a staff that I saw there. And I said, I came in this bus. I recognized the bus. I came in this bus and I lost my money here. I came to get it. The guy sized me up, looked at me. From head to toe, he said, wait, the manager isn't here. Wait, and even the driver isn't here. I think he had gone to refresh. So I waited for just a bit, and the manager for that you know, transport service came. And I said to him, I said, sir, I came in this bus, and I dropped my money in there, and I came to get it. He sized me up again, and then he starts off. How much was it? I told him. Describe what park you had that money in. I described it. Then this will amaze you. What he says after this will amaze you. He says, I made sure up to three people counted this money so that the owner wouldn't come and say that we have taken out of it. There was a fear he exuded when he talked about that money it was clear that there was a supernatural presence hovering over that money the angels had secured it now listen i sat somewhere behind in that bus that money fell the people who sat with me did not pick it someone could have just thrown it in his bag and it was quite a handsome sum of money it was somewhere close to thirty thousand or so in that envelope 2002 the year 2002 so this person didn't take it probably picked it gave it to the driver the driver could also have cooled up with that money but he didn't take it he took it to the manager the manager could have closed the case you know but he also didn't take it and was literally under fear as he spoke to me imagine 2002 is probably uh, 21 years ago. So 21 years minus my age. I mean, I was a very, very, very young man, you know. And I got back my money. Angels truly work. Angels truly work. If you develop your understanding of this truth and if you put this truth to work, you would find amazing things happen in your life verse 21 of psalm 103 bless ye the lord all ye his hosts ye ministers of his that do his pleasure so if you know what the pleasure of god is it is the angel's responsibility to enforce it with long life he satisfies you the angels have a responsibility to keep you alive your going out is blessed and your coming in is blessed the angels have a responsibility to make it happen. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the country. The angels have a responsibility to make it happen. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come in one way and flee in seven ways. The angels have the mandate to make it happen. The Bible says they do the commandments of the Lord hearkening, hearkening unto 
the voice of his word. Hearkening. The word hearken in the Hebrew suggests the um, set position. Now, if you are conversant with sprinting, right? So, uh, it's runners on your max. Set. And then the gun goes boom. And that's the go, right? Now, the Bible says they hearken. They do the commandments of the Lord, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Let's tie it up together. They hearken. They are in the hearken position. They are in the set position. They are in the set position, waiting for you to give voice to the word of God. And they go. The angels are in the set position. And that's the translation of the word hearken. To hearken means to be in a ready to go position. But it's the voice of his word that is equivalent to the release of the gunshot for which the runners begin to run. Make up your mind that, 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 that your angels won't be idle. Your angels won't be jobless. They are angels that are bored. They are sitting there every day and then, you know, they have to give their daily report to heaven. They're like, oh, Father, we've done nothing the last three years. We're dying of boredom here, you know. But some of our angels are always on their toes. They're busy, busy, left, right, and center, always showing up in heaven. You know how God can say, hey, angel so-and-so, we've not seen you in heaven for some time. Well, I have not been sent on any errands lately. The last time I was sent, I was sent on an errand was two and a half years ago. Now I'm just here, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that my master, my boss, would just say something, <laughs> will say something. My mouth is busy over my life every day. I am blessed in the name of Jesus. Ah, the Lord causes all grace to abound unto me, that I always having all sufficiency in all things abound unto every good work. Scarcity is not permitted in my life. I always have. In the name of Jesus, I release you ministering spirits. Pour exceeding great abundance into my life. Bring me into uncommon favor. Bring me into connections with significant entities. In the precious name of Jesus. You must say something every day. I can't die untimely. With long life, God satisfies me. He fulfills the length of my days. I shall not lie, I, I shall not die, but leave to proclaim the works of the Lord. I walk into favor. Favor comes to me. I am blessed in the country. I am blessed in the city. In the name of Jesus, I declare that it is well with me. It is well with the works of my hands. Nothing hurts nor destroys in my life, in my family, in my ministry. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I have exceeding great abundance. I am blessed after the order of exceeding great abundance. In the name of Jesus, I am creative. Hey, you must get busy speaking the word of God over your life. Does the Bible not say in Psalm 87 verse 3, that glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. Does the Bible not say in the book of Psalm 16 and in verse 16, he said the lines are fallen unto you in pleasant places. You have a goodly, a goodly inheritance. Wow. Say it. Voice it. They do the commandments of God, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The word of God is written. It is the believer that gives voice to it. It is the believer that gives voice to it. You have angels. I showed you in Matthew 18 verse 10 that you have angels. Children have angels. Adults have angels. And Jesus said, they always behold the face of the Father which is in heaven. This is what the angels do. They interface between heaven and earth. You remember in uh, Genesis 28, I believe that was Genesis 28. Yes, Genesis 28. Jacob has an encounter uh, where um, he, 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 he takes the stones of the place where he was and uses them for his pillows because 
um, you know, the sun was down and he couldn't continue on his journey. And in that encounter, he sees a ladder that proceeds from the earth into the heavens. And who was busy on this ladder? Angels were going back and forth. I believe taking desires from earth into heaven, bringing supplies from heaven into earth. Oh my God, you have angels Put them to work. And I just showed you that it is part of our heritage. Jesus needed angels in his earthly walk. And everyone who is an heir of salvation, angels have been assigned to them. We saw that in the book of Hebrews 1 verse 13 and verse 14. And the subject is so important that Hebrews 2 verse 1, which is a continuation. which Now, because Hebrews chapter 1 ends in verse 14, the next verse is Hebrews 2 verse 1 and he says that we should make sure that we give them the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep and so the subject of angels was one of those subjects that he said hold hold very closely to your heart lest you let them sleep this is a force a power a truth that has been delivered to us and we can make the most of our angels father abraham needed angels he sends his servant to go get a wife for his son and the man says what if i don't find and he says the angel that kept me in the way shall go with you shall go with you in the book of acts chapter 12 peter is in prison and herod is going to kill him but somehow the church is praying angels are mobilized and this angel shows up in the prison long story short he's set free and he's brought out and the angel takes him into uh takes him uh, to some place where they see the iron gate that leads to the city and the bible says that iron gate opened of its own accord that part of that story really hits me very hard there are strong gates to places you want to enter you have knocked but it looks like your knocking is insignificant release your angels to open the iron gates release your angels to open closed doors release your angels to bring you into uncommon favor this week is a blessed week for you this month is a blessed week a blessed month for you release your angels tell them to bring you into uncommon favor tell them to bring you into favor that is unprecedented in your life tell them to create access to people that matter release the angels based upon what the word says if the word has said it that is the business of the angels to do but you must know what the word of god says and you must voice it so we derive commands from the commandments of god we create commands from the truth of god's word and this is what the angels run with this is what the angels run with speak over your life all the time if you know something that god has said make derive commands out of it speak over your children speak over your spouse speak over your life speak into your future sow seeds into your future i tell you the ministry of angels is real this is a big game changer in your life god gave us angels so that life can happen for good for us so that life can happen productively life can happen favorably for us use your angels send them to work and you will have testimonies that will amaze you testimonies that will amaze you is it protection is it provision your angels have a mandate to make it happen i hope you learned something and um, god bless you